This is a CBS News special report. I'm Major Garrett in Washington. President Biden is about to address flying objects recently shot down in North American airspace, including the February 4th downing of a Chinese spy balloon off the South Carolina coast. Since that episode, there have been three other objects shot down by U.S. fighter jets over Alaska, Canada, and Lake Huron, one of the Great Lakes. Members of Congress, Republican and Democrat, have been critical of the White House for a lack of transparency about all this, and Congress would like more answers. Last president Biden has approached the microphones. Let's listen to the president. By China's high-altitude balloon. Our military, through the North American Aerospace Defense Command, so-called NOR NORAD, closely scrutinized uh, the, uh, our airspace, including enhancing our radar to pick up more slow-moving objects above our country around the world. In doing so, they uh, tracked three unidentified objects, one in Alaska, Canada, and over Lake Huron in the Midwest. They acted in accordance with established parameters for determining how to deal with unidentified aerial objects in U.S. airspace. At their recommendation, I gave the order to take down these three objects due to hazards to civilian commercial air traffic and because we could not rule out the surveillance risk of sensitive facilities. We acted in consultation with the Canadian government. I spoke personally with Prime Minister Trudeau and Kant from Canada on Saturday. And just as critically, we acted out of an abundance of caution and an opportunity that allowed us to take down these, these objects safely. Our military and the Canadian military are seeking to recover the debris so we can learn more about these three objects. Our intelligence community is still assessing all three incidences. They're reporting to me daily and will continue their urgent efforts to do so, and I will communicate that to the Congress. We don't yet know exactly what these three objects were, but nothing, nothing right now suggests they were related to China's spy balloon program or that they were surveillance vehicles from other, any other country. The intelligence community's current assessment is that these three objects were most likely balloons tied to private companies recreation or research institutions studying weather or conducting other scientific research. When I came into office, I instructed our intelligence community to take a broad look at the phenomenon of unidentified aerial objects. We know that a range of entities, including countries, companies, and research organizations, operate objects at altitudes for purposes that are not nefarious, including legitimate scientific research. I want to be clear. We don't have any evidence that there has been a sudden increase in the number of objects in the sky. We're now just seeing more of them partially because the steps we've taken to increase our radars, to narrow our radars. And we have to keep adapting our approach to uh, delaying, to dealing with these challenges. That's why I've directed my team to come back to me with sharper rules for how we will deal with these unidentified objects moving forward, distinguishing, distinguishing between those that are likely to pose safety and security risks that necessitate action and those that do not. But make no mistake, if any object presents a threat to the safety and security of the American people, I will take it down. I'll be sharing with Congress these classified policy parameters when they are completed and uh, they'll remain classified so we don't give our roadmap to our enemies to try to evade our defenses. Going forward, these parameters will guide what actions we'll take while responding to unmanned and unidentified aerial objects. We're going to keep adapting them as the challenges evolve, if it evolves. In addition, we've I've directed my national security advisor to lead a government-wide effort to make sure we are positioned to deal safely and effectively with the objects in our airspace. First, we will establish a better inventory of unmanned airborne objects in space above the United States airspace and make sure that inventory is accessible and up to date. Second, we'll implement further measures to improve our capacity to detect unmanned objective, uh, objects in our airspace. Third, we'll update the rules and regulations for launching and maintaining unmanned objects in the skies above the United States of America. And fourth, my Secretary of State will lead an effort to help establish a global, a global a common global norms in this largely unregulated space. These steps will lead to safer and more secure skies for our air travelers, our military, our scientists, and for people on the ground as well. 
That's my job as your president and commander in chief. As the events of the previous days have shown, we'll always act to protect the interest of the American people and the security of the American people. Since I came to office, we've developed the ability to identify, track, and study high altitude surveillance balloons connected with the Chinese military. When one of these high altitude surveillance balloons entered our airspace over the continental United States earlier in the month, I gave the order to shoot it down as soon as it would be safe to do so. The military advised against shooting it down over land because of the sheer size of it. It was the size of multiple school buses and it posed a risk to people on the ground if it was shot down where people lived. Instead, we tracked it closely, we analyzed its capabilities, and we learned more about how it operates. And because we knew its path, we were able to protect sensitive sites against collection. We waited until it was safely over water, which would not only protect civilians, but also enable us to recover substantial components for further, analysis, for, for, for further analytics. And then we shot it down, sending a clear message, clear message, the violation of our sovereignty is unacceptable. We'll act to protect our country, and we did. Now, this past Friday, we put restrictions on six firms that directly support the People's Republic Liberation Army, the People's, Lib the People's Liberation Army Aerospace Program. That includes airships and balloons, uh, denying them access to U.S. technology. We briefed our diplomatic partners and our allies around the world and we know about China's program and where their balloons have flown. Some of them have also raised their concerns directly with China. Our exports have lifted components of the Chinese balloons payload off the ocean floor. We're analyzing them as I speak, and what we learn will strengthen our capabilities. Now, we'll also continue to engage with China, as we have throughout the past two weeks. As I've said since the beginning of my administration, we seek competition, not conflict with China. We're not looking for a new Cold War. But I make no apologize. I make no apologies, and we will compete. And we'll, be res we'll responsibly manage that competition so that it doesn't veer into conflict. This episode underscores the importance of maintaining open lines of communication between our diplomats and our military professionals. Our diplomats will be engaging further and I will remain in communication with President Xi. I'm grateful for the work of the last several weeks of our intelligence, diplomatic, and military professionals who have proved once again to be the most capable in the world. And I want to thank you all. Now, look, the other thing I want to point out is that we are going to keep our allies and the Congress contemporaneously informed of all we know and all we learn. And uh, I expect to be speaking with President Xi and I hope we have we are going to get to the bottom of this. But I make no apologies for taking down that balloon. Thank you very much. Sir, the question was it? There's been, sir, there's been criticism. There's been criticism that this was. There's been criticism that this. Sir, Mr. President, Mr. President, there has been criticism. Mr. President, there has been criticism that this was an overreaction that was done because of political pressure. You come my office and ask the question. We have more polite people. Mr. President, why have you chosen Poland for your trip to mark? anniversary of the war, and what's your message? What? When I'm speaking to President Xi, Mr. President, an aggressive effort to put questions to the President of the United States. He thought about it, came back to the mics, then left. Let's bring in Face the Nation moderator and Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Margaret Brennan. Margaret, you listen to the President. You've said before, and I think it's indicative of what the President said, the administration is trying to walk a very fine line here, saying that this was a violation of U.S. sovereignty, but not to amplify or antagonize China in an atmosphere where there is competition, but not, as the president said, a new Cold War. That's right, Major. And the president very explicitly signaling there, saying we are not looking for a new Cold War, just competition, not conflict. He's trying to reopen lines of communication that have largely been cut off. As you know, the defense minister in China wouldn't accept a call from the secretary of defense after that surveillance balloon was shot down. Uh, but as he's signaling there, there is the expectation that diplomats may soon begin talking, perhaps after uh, the two leaders speak, uh, as uh, the president 
president said he expects to have a conversation with Xi Jinping. He gave no date for that. But we do know that the secretary of state will have a chance uh, to see his Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi, uh, in the coming days at a security forum they both will be at in Europe. Uh, so perhaps that's an opportunity to try to de-escalate I thought, Major, the other thing that was notable here at a time when the administration is clearly trying to show uh, some muscle flexing, that they are clear-eyed that China is increasingly aggressive in the technological space. You had announcements from uh, the Justice Department and the FBI making very clear that they see China's use of surveillance and the use of its technology uh, as a potential threat and an increased threat against Americans themselves, uh, warning that data collection today could could be used in a really nefarious way in the future. This is the front in the technology space where this conflict is currently being played out. But as the president says, he doesn't want to have a military conflict and wants to lower the tension there. I think the president was also clearly signaling that he hears Congress and the complaints uh, that they're not getting enough information about any of this. Not just surveillance balloons, but active Chinese hacking. Something that's been topical here this week in Washington. I want to go to our senior White House correspondent, Weijia Zhang. Weijia, you and other reporters at the White House daily have been pressing the administration, asking questions, amplifying some questions raised by Congress. From your vantage point, Weijia, did the president answer many or even some of the questions being persistently put before this White House? You know, Major, there's still so many unknowns, and I don't think he did himself any favors by essentially admitting that um, there was uh, something that needed to change, right? Because he announced some um, new policy for how they were going to track any of these unidentified objects in the sky. He said there would be better communication, that there would be better, better inventory, um, and a better understanding of exactly what these objects are, and confirmed that the three unidentified objects that the U.S. shot down um, were likely benign, as CBS News has been reporting. So what we don't know yet is what they were, who they were from, what they they were doing there. But again, he said that it looks like, based on current intelligence, that um, they were not there for uh, malicious reasons. And so I think it begs the question of why those uh, policies weren't already in place. Why did the U.S. shoot them down so quickly if you didn't know what they were? And I think, um, as you mentioned, he ignored a really important question, which was, did, did you overreact? Was the shoot down of these three unidentified objects an overreaction? because he received so much criticism for waiting seven days before taking down that Chinese spy balloon. Um, and so he did not answer that question. He didn't answer any questions. But to your original point, Major, I think, you know, he's still waiting to hear from the intelligence community about what more he can say, which is frustrating for us because, um, no, he didn't clarify a lot of uh, the unknowns today, Major. And the president made clear much of what he conveys to Congress and our allies will remain classified. A big part of this story resides at the Pentagon, so I want to bring in our national security correspondent, David Martin. David, catch our audience up on the status of retrieval efforts, not only of the Chinese spy balloon, but the other objects, such as we know it. Well, let's start with the Chinese uh, spy balloon off the uh, coast of uh, South Carolina in about uh, 45, 50 feet of water. Uh, Pentagon officials say that recovery effort has essentially uh, been wrapped up. I don't know that a, a final decision has been made to call it off, but officials here tell me that they have gotten everything they were looking for off the bottom of the ocean. Because remember, they knew what they were looking for, because as that plane, uh, that uh, balloon was going across uh, the United States, U-2 uh, spy planes were circling it, uh, taking pictures uh, of all the uh, sensors on that uh, balloon. So before that thing uh, disappeared beneath the uh, surface of the water, they knew uh, what they were looking for. And earlier this week, they brought up uh, an array of antennas that was about uh, 30 or 40 feet long, uh, which uh, is the, the heart of what they were looking for. And that's now going to uh, be in FBI custody while they uh, examine it and then try to reverse engineer it to see exactly what spying capabilities that um, balloon possessed. The other three unidentified objects are still uh, MIA. Uh, 
Uh, they went, all went down in uh, either water or remote areas, one off the extreme uh, northeastern coast of Alaska, one in Canada's Yukon, and one in deep waters of Lake Huron. And they uh, have not even uh, been located yet, uh, much less recovered. So for a definitive answer as to where these unidentified objects came from, we're probably going to have to wait a while. Going to have to wait a while. Our thanks to David Martin at the Pentagon, Weijia Jiang at the White House, and Margaret Brennan here in our CBS Bureau in Washington. Our coverage will continue on CBS News Streaming, your local news, and tonight on the CBS Evening News. This has been a CBS News Special Report. I'm Major Garrett in Washington. Good day.